Good. From the Bill Frelick Athletic Center at Uhas McGinley Stadium, this is the Coach's Corner. I'm Bill Navari. Our Coach of the Week, Jake Shafino. Jake, it's been a long time since uh, we got to chat. Like, it's 10 years since it was your senior year at Penn Hills High School. Yes, um, since then, it's been a wonderful road for you. And you've gone to Akron, you've gone to the NFL, and now you've come back to, uh, to Penn Hills. I mean, what brings you back after, uh, after all your travels? I definitely miss Penn Hills. Um, you know, I graduated in 98, um, got a full ride to Akron University. Spent four years up there, and, um, had a great career. Got drafted by the Tennessee Titans, spent uh, four years in the NFL. Um, Coach Graham heard I was back in town. He gave me a phone call, asked me what I'd like to help out with, with the receivers. He said he had a great bunch of guys, a lot of athletes, and uh, I told him I would love to come up here and help out. Oh, it's great to and have I'd you give, back. Give back. This is my way of giving back to the community in Penn Hills. Uh, Fifteen years I've been doing the Penn Hills games, and there's been one losing season. Mm. Unfortunately, that was your senior year. Uh, yeah, it was the 90, 1997 tough. season. 97 season. Um, but of all the seniors, and a lot of senior seasons that, that I remember, yours is one of, one of the top that I, that I remembered simply because of the way the season went. You started off as a receiver. The team was short on running backs. You came in as a running back. And then you played well, but you were missing games because you were getting hurt. Um, the team that season would find ways to lose. You would be up in a game, you would fumble. Uh, you'd be tied in a game, and late in the game, somebody would make a long run or a long pass. But yet, you guys kept chugging along week after week. You started off the season 0-8. Mm -hmm. Ninth week of the season, Central Catholic comes in. You guys knock them out of the playoffs. Another NFLer, Mark Bulger, Mark the quarterback that time, really at 0-8, what really kept you guys playing at that point? I just... You know, blood, sweat, and tears. We went through camp together. Uh, we never gave up on each other. We stuck with each other. We believed in, uh, you know, we believed in our head coach Neil Gordon at the time, and uh, we didn't want to give up on each other, man. Like I said, it's, we put a, we put in a lot of work over the summertime and in camp, and uh, you know, like Neil said, and the seniors at the time, myself, and a lot of the other seniors, you know, you never quit, and you just you just keep you got to keep working hard. And the following week, you guys blew yeah. out Ambridge. Yeah, we blew out Ambridge. Yeah, and that was fun. Okay. But that was that was definitely um, that was a tough season. Um, that was we were fresh off of the uh, the '96 season, number one in the country, and the '95 season I was a part of. We won states, but um, you know, it was a tough. We were we had a young line at the time, and uh, you know, it, it was a learning experience, though. Could, could at that point when you're going through that season, could you ever picture that you know what I'm going to get a scholarship to a Division One school, and then after that, you're off to the NFL. I mean, could you ever picture kids dream it? Yeah. But is that something that you seriously considered at that point? Uh, it was definitely a dream come true, and it was definitely a blessing. Um, but you know, the whole time I, I the whole time I came up, you know, my dad always, you know, he had me playing football and basketball at a young age, and he always told me, um, you know, make sure first. He he always said, make sure you you know you get good grades in school, A's and B's, so you can get a scholarship, uh, college scholarship. You know, he he told me you can get you can go to college on grades, but um. You know, he he wanted he wanted to make sure I got a free education, and um, you know, I worked hard at sports. You know, I was blessed to get a um, football scholarship. I was happy with the scholarship, the University of Akron, and um, it all worked out for me. And I was drafted, and it was a dream come true. Now, what were your thoughts whenever uh, whenever you actually did got you get drafted in NFL? I mean, did did you tell people pinch me? Is it real? Yeah, it it, it was definitely like I said, it was a dream come true. Um, I remember the draft. I was drafted in the fifth round, and um, teams were calling me from like the from the third round, they start calling me. The Steelers called me, said they were going to take me at the third round pick. I think they ended up picking Randall and um, teams called me in the fourth round. And uh, it got to the point I just I had to just I, I left my house and I came down here to the to the football field to the track just to, to walk around and just you know clear my head. And uh, I remember my phone rang and it was my mother, and she was all ecstatic, screaming, and told me I got drafted. My name came across the TV, and uh, I remember running home. I lived right up the street, and uh, it was it was a day I'll never forget. My question is, though, um, what were your thoughts the first time you saw a Jake Shafino football card? Oh, um, that had to be the it, coolest it, thing. It was cool, man. It really did. It, it took a while. It took a while to hit me. Um, like I said, I'm just, I'm just blessed. I, I think, I, I thank the Lord every day that I got an opportunity to play in the NFL. 
Oh, that, I mean, that's fabulous. And, you know, it's, it's, it's great that, you know, you know, from my perspective, the other parents' perspective and, you know, people involved, mm -hmm. that when you see the kids come through here, you know, especially when you see, you know, kids like yourself who, who, who you know, had the work ethic, who, who, who persevered, you know, and then you went on and, 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 you, and you did well. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's almost not only a success uh, for, for Jake Shafino mm -hmm. and the Shafino family, mm -hmm. but also the entire community feels it as well, and they also have that pride. You know, and you know, did you feel that you know everybody was kind of you know even though you were going to Tennessee, yeah. that everybody was you know you were taking yeah. Penn Hills with you? Yeah, I definitely felt that way. Yeah. I knew um, even though I was in Tennessee and we were beating up on the Steelers when I was down in Tennessee, I, I knew people would still watch the games and said that's a Penn Hills guy right there, and they took pride in that. And um, and I, I know I did. I, I, I took yeah. pride in it being a Penn guy and represent Western PA. And, uh, and I try to tell the kids, it's, it's, it's a lot of hard work. You have to work hard. We play the game because we love it. And if you love something, you have to become a student of the game and you have to work hard. And, you know, you have a lot of knuckleheads running around. You just have to try to block that out and just focus. Because when you're not working hard, there's always a kid out here that's, that's working, that's trying to make it. So it's, it's hard work and uh, dedication. Well, I know I was rooted you'd catch 10 touchdown passes in a game, but still it was go Steelers. <laughs> <laughs> I think I was uh, – I think I was three and zero in my career against the Steelers, but it was it was definitely great coming home and playing. I okay, but was, now, now that you're back, are you still a Tennessee fan, or have you have you uh, um, brought the allegiance back as well, or a little of both? I, a little of both. I still root for the Titans, and I'm you know Steelers. The black and gold is in my blood, so I still go for the hometown team. My family loves them, so I don't love them as much because I played against them. So. But I still let it still is. I guess it's still is in Titans. It's it's a whole different perspective yeah. that you know the folks really may not understand that whenever you get in line up against them, it's it's not that uh, black and gold you grew up with. But you decided to come back and you're giving back to the community and part of this team. Um, wide receiver coach, you got some great kids with some great yeah. hands. You want to you know talk about your role with with the uh, Pendles Indians? Uh, I just come up here and, and try to show the kids uh, what I you know what I learned throughout my years. Um, and they, they definitely believe in me. They, 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 they listen to me because, I, you know, I've been there. You know, I played big-time high school football here. I played college ball, and, I, you know, I was drafted. So I played at each level. And um, like I said, the, I give the kids my, DVD, my NFL DVDs, my, some, of my college, um, some of my college stuff, and they watch it. And, um, and the receivers I work with, they, they love to learn. They work hard, you know. I have Brandon Eiffel, great receiver. Dante Brown, great receiver. Um, um, Patton, Darius Patton, he's going to be a great receiver. I have Corey Brown. Um, Tyler Chris, with some Chris great Washington, catches. Tyler, you know, Chris, Tyler you know. Berryman. Chris, you could go to a five receiver bunch. set on this team. You know. It's not enough balls to go around for the, the, the group of guys I got, but uh, we, we try to do our best to keep them happy. With the circumstances surrounding the team at the beginning of the year and then with the team starting off uh, as disappointingly as it did, um, did a lot of these kids turn to you as you know because you were able to understand that kind of a you know uh, you know unsuccessful start of a season. So, you know, I mean you know did, were you there saying you know hold it together guys you know it's going to turn around and you know we still got conference play to go. Oh yeah, we saw we definitely saw a lot of frustration in the kids' faces and uh, we had to tell them just you know just just believe in what we're doing just you know just stay in there and uh, things are going to turn around for us. You know new coaching staff, new offensive system, defensive defensive system. Um, it was tough. It was definitely that first Gateway game. Uh, I would love to get Gateway again, but um, you may you may still we may see him. <laughs> but uh, you see last week with the Central game, our kids are starting to they're starting to believe in what we're doing, and we're looking pretty good right now. You know, I told a lot of the kids, you know, their heads were hanging at one and three, and I said, well, you know what? In the season starts. You're now zero zero. Zero, zero. In that new season, you know, overall you're three and three, but in the new season, two and zero, oh, yeah. you've knocked off Central. Yeah. The conference is in your hands. Yeah. To win or lose, yeah, you just we, have to do your thing, yeah, and it's yours. That's what we try to explain to them. Uh, once conference started, it's a, it's a new season, it's a five-game season, and we got to do what we have to do. I, I just wonder who were those kids last week that showed up at Central. Ah, oh, that was. Um, were those the real Penn Hills Indians? That's, that's the real Penn Hills Indians right there. That's, so we knew that we knew they were going to show up sooner we're or later. Looking forward to the rest of the season uh, to see what we're going to do in the playoffs and everything. Of course, this week, uh, Kiski Cavaliers. Um, anything in the works for them, uh, you know, offensively? Uh, we're going to see a lot of uh, uh, maybe the receivers. We saw uh, um, a nice go rat for a touchdown last week, and we see a lot of more deep passes this week. Oh, we're definitely going to throw the ball up. Uh, we're going to run, establish the run with our great running backs, Teddy Blakeman, uh, Darby. They're doing a great job. But, uh, you know, I'm a receivers coach, so I'm, a, I'm in Coach Graham and uh, Coach Belinsky's ear, ear every day. We've got to throw the ball up, especially to uh, the receivers we have. So, so when, you'll, you'll see some, you'll see the ball in here this week. So when you get in that little, uh, you know, coach is on the side, it's third and one, guys, what do we do? It's, you know, it's Jake Shafino, go deep, go deep, right? Third, third one, <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm trying to get the coaches to throw the ball deep. Just throw it up, throw it, throw it up, and we'll go get it. 
Well, there you go. Well, best of luck to you. Thanks Thank for coming you. out, and it's uh, great to see you back here at uh, Penn Hills again. And uh, of course, you know we got an instance here where, I'm sure, you're an NFL guy, but uh, there's three others in a locker room as well. So, you know, sometimes uh, you don't uh, stand out as much, and it's unusual. Yeah, you have Demond Gibson and uh, Big Matt Morgan, and they're doing a great job with the with um with their players. Uh, Demond's doing a great job with the D line. He's showing them what he knows from the league and college. And uh, Matt Morgan, you see the O line starting to pick it up, and they're doing a great job. And, and uh, uh, we talked to Lou Rash last week. Lou Rash. Oh, Lou Rash, yeah. yeah. He's he, still a guy. So it's a lot of talent. There's a lot of talent in, talented coaches in the played um, NFL. So And the kids love that. And Penn Hills is blessed to have you guys yes, uh, coming back. Yes, uh, best of luck to you. Hopefully you. Uh, you can stick around uh, uh, for many years to come and uh, be part of the community uh, once again. Yes, sir. Thank you. Jake Schofino, the receivers coach of the 2008 Penn Hills Indians. Coming up next, our Seniors of the Week as the Coach's Corner continues here on Comcast. Our seniors of the week, Dan Mason, Stefan Thompson, and Teddy Blakeman of the 2008 Penn Hills Indians. Dan, you're the key of the uh, Penn Hills defense. Uh, you really had to enjoy getting back into action following uh, two week, a two-week layoff uh, to really beat up Central Catholic last week. You really had to be happy with the way your defense played. Uh, yes, sir. We played how we beat them before when we went to Hines. Just dominated them, hit them, everything we're supposed to do. Uh, you got a little banged up earlier in the season. Coaches, uh, precautionary, uh, kept you off for two weeks. I know it had to be frustrating being on the sideline, especially uh, especially watching the North Allegheny game. Yeah, that was a real good game the team played. I mean, I wish I was out there, but I had to sit it out. I mean, ain't nothing I can do about it. Uh, you know, I know you're a leader on the field. Uh, a couple games they tried to ask you to be a leader off the field. Um, I know you'd rather be that leader on the field. I mean, what was the big difference between trying to do it from the sidelines as opposed to doing it in the huddle? I mean, it was a little difference, but how I try to model myself and try to be a leader on the field and off the field, so it wasn't too much of a problem. But I still wanted to be out there with my fellas playing ball. So uh, when you guys get in that defensive huddle or you know, you're going to line up uh, on the other side of the ball from the you know, opposing offense, uh, what are you shouting out? What are you telling these guys? I mean, what's going through uh, the mind of Dan Mason? When I when I'm like when I'm on the sideline, I'm just 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 yelling out calls and everything, yelling out adjustments, you know. But when you're in that huddle, uh, when I'm in the huddle, I'm trying to get my guys ready, trying to get them excited and everything. They're already excited, trying to get them even more excited. I know sometimes I see that huddle, you start coming into it, everybody seems to back away a step, you know. Uh, sometimes uh, you, no, is, it, be, is it that intensity? I'll be trying to tell them to back up, they'll be too close to the bar, I can't get in there. <laughs> <laughs> Although maybe they were, you know, a little, uh, you know, Dan's coming in a little, a uh, little intense today. Uh, sometimes I spit when I talk, you know, they ain't trying to get spit on. <laughs> uh, this week, uh, Kiski comes into town. Uh, you guys are 2-0 in the conference. Obviously, uh, the section is in your own hands. You guys rule your own destiny. Uh, how important is it that the team that showed up against Central Catholic last week shows up this week against uh, Kiski? Oh, it's very important. I mean, we've seen how we can play as when we play as a team. Everybody's clicking, and that's how we're going to play, continue on through the season and all the way to Hershey. Okay, best of luck uh, Friday night. Uh, Stefan Thompson, uh, it seems like you've been around forever. All three of you guys, I think you guys have been playing since sixth grade up here. Um, uh, you know, you're getting in a lot of action. Uh, the team finally turned, seemed to turn things around. You guys are doing well. I mean, where are the Indians going from here? I mean, we can only go up. We've been down so long, so the only thing we can do is get better. So we plan on building on what we did last week at Central and keep it going out with Hershey, like Dan said. So you play some offense, you play some defense. I mean, which which do you prefer? I'm a defensive player. I like hitting. I mean, but I play football, so whoever I'm needed, I'm going to play for my team. Okay. Uh, the other question is, why the change of numbers? You guys keep throwing me <laughs> off. You're changing the numbers. I'm out there looking for number 30. You know, you guys, you know, Dan over here, he's, he's stuck to it. I mean, you can see by the... You know, the holes in his jersey. But, uh, you know, is, is, it, is it a number thing with you guys? I mean, Teddy, the same way over there. No, it ain't really a number thing. But the only reason Dan stuck with his because he couldn't change. He wasn't here when we changed. That's the only Dan stuck with us. But I don't know. We talked about it doing it since we had freshmen and talked about getting any numbers in. So when we had a chance to get it. We just grabbed it. Great game last week against Central Catholic. What are you looking for this week against uh, Kiski? To better my performance, maybe get three picks, a couple fumbles, and uh, get better. See what I can do for my team. Team defense-wise, I mean, you guys looking to keep it rolling? Always, always. I mean, the defense is always strong. We just finally had to show up, and we showed up and played like we had to. But we shouldn't just do that against the big team. We got to do that from now on out. We can't play half games. We got to play whole games. So 
with the win over Central, you guys are 2 0 in the conference. You guys know that you're controlling your own destiny. Is that, is that giving you guys an added lift in the locker room, knowing that, hey, it's ours there for the taking, let's go get it? It yeah, making us all realize that if we lose, it's on us. So, as, as seniors, got to lead our team, and sophomores and freshmen and juniors, everybody playing the team is helping us do it for us. And us knowing that we hold our destiny, pushes us, adds us on to keep it going. Well, good luck uh, Friday night. Uh, Teddy Blakeman. Um, Feeling a little sick today. I'm sure you guys, you know, you're looking forward to getting in uh, tomorrow night run against Kiski. Last couple weeks, uh, the Blakeman show has been uh, <laughs> has been coming out. Uh, you know, you're looking, you know, you sh you're starting to get the legs under you. You're getting the motor going. I mean, how are you feeling as far as, uh, you know, you get out there, you're getting the ball, and uh, you guys, you're starting to pound? I mean, I just be feeling good. I mean, I came back off a of hammy at Miami Street, had messed up my hammy for about four weeks. Came back off of that, just trying to get it strong. Just been playing hard. Uh, how was it last week? You know, you, you, you and I talked a little bit. Uh, you know, I said, you know, forget the east and west so much. Try to pound north and south. You did that last week. I mean, you were really punishing kids on the other side of the ball. I mean, you know, you see the smile now. I know that's the way you were smiling whenever you were coming up, uh, you know, after they finally brought you down. I mean, yeah, just feel good getting up field. Just got to keep running hard. Lord, keep my sh shoulders square. Can't nobody bring me down after I do that. So uh, last week, uh, I think about, what, another 180 yards uh, rushing. Um, 88. With uh, you know, not a lot of bit, not a lot of big runs in there. So it was a lot of pounding, a lot of you know, four, five, six, you know, ten yards. You know, he had a, he had broke a couple away, but yet you know, it was the workhorse all night. And you you tell the coaches that hey, give me the ball and I'll just wear him down. Yeah, I just be wanting the ball. When the ball's in my hand, I feel like I do whatever I want. Can't nobody talk tackle me. Big credit to my line too, cause they do a good job up front. Receivers too. Now, this week, uh, you're going up against Kiski. Uh, obviously, the team doesn't want to let down uh, coming off of Central, which is which is a big opponent. Um, how important is it again this week to continue that momentum and, and run the football as well? We just got to keep playing hard. No matter who we play, we can't slack up, no matter what their record is. You know I mean, that's how we're going to get the hands. Just play hard, play every team like we played last week. Uh, we had uh, Coach Shafino as, uh, as our coach of the week, and he was once talking about getting the balls into the receivers. Uh, how important is it to get the running game going in order to, you know, help get the ball out to the receivers. Well, we got to run first. Get the running game going first, and then we'll see what's up with the passing. We really don't like passing that much. <laughs> what, what do you, uh, what do you want to accomplish this season? Uh, you know, as as a senior, what are your goals for the uh, 2008 season? Well, I definitely want to get back to hands because I know how that felt when there as a sophomore, and it just felt excellent, excellent, excellent. <laughs> and uh, we're just trying to take it further than that. Maybe get to Hershey. What can we expect from you after you uh, after you graduate from Penn Hills? I'm definitely going to school. Got a couple of colleges looking at me. Go play football. After that, that's it. I understand that uh, your interest is in uh, is in the medicine, in the medicinal field. You want to go into like sports medicine or, or something like that? Maybe. I want to probably be going sports or some something, something with sports. That's all I know for real, for real. Okay. Well, best of luck to you, and uh, great talking to you. Good luck uh, Friday night and, and the rest of the way, and hopefully we get to see you at Heinz again. Thank you. Stefan Thompson, uh, what are your uh, goals for your senior season and also for your senior year? Well, I mean, my goal is to get the hands, obviously. we Like I said, like he said, we've been there. We've done that. But I'm trying to get to have a different outcome, hopefully take states. So our names will always be remembered in Penn Hills as playing football player. But I plan to go to school, play a little ball. Probably try some psychology and see if I could do it that because I like working with kids. So try that out, see what that feels like, and it's good money. So it's the kind of thing to maybe uh, uh, you come back to Penn Hills. Like you know, have a lot of coaches here who played here and came back and that maybe you know you go off and uh, you know maybe come back and teach or work with the kids here in the district. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I always come back. Hopefully, we have a Thompson at Fraley Center instead of Bill Fraley. We have a Thompson Center. You know, change it up a little bit. But yeah, I'm always gonna come back to my team. It's my family now, part of Penn Hills family. Uh, nothing wrong with dreaming. Uh, Danny, what's, uh, what are you looking to uh, get accomplished this season as far as getting through your, sen your uh, senior season here at Penn Hills? This season, like both of them said, get back to hands, but I want to go a little bit further. We didn't taste that. We didn't been there, done that. I want to get to Hershey and get them rings. What can we expect from you after, uh, after you graduate? What are your plans? Uh, I got a couple scholarships, you know. I mean, I'm probably, I'm, most likely I'm going to go to school, but the only reason why I got them is because of my D-line from over the years. We'll get a shout out to Aaron Donald, <laughs> Miles Davis, Gabe Wright, and, to, and Slant Glenn. They hold it. They hold it down for me. Open up the holes for me so I can run down here. So uh, you know, I know you haven't decided on the college yet. So we're not going to bring that one up. But uh, when, when you get to college, I mean, obviously you're, you know you're looking to go and play football. But uh, what are you looking as far as 
after football? I mean, what do you plan on studying? I mean, coincidentally, I mean, I'm trying to go into psychology too, you know. I mean, it's a real good field. I, I like it a lot and uh, I understand it, so I'm probably going something like that. So, I mean, there's a lot of psychology involved with, uh, you know, football as well as trying to uh, you know, understand understand what the other guys are thinking and trying to psych them out as well. I mean, you kind of, uh, you know, working on that out on the field? <laughs> yeah, it has a lot to do with it, but I really, I mean, just want to understand the mind, you know. I want to understand how, how we think, you know. I don't even understand how I think sometimes, so <laughs> I really want to figure that out. He said I really okay. love to well, best that. of luck to you, not only this season, but everything, uh, you know, what you guys do all uh, after you guys graduate. And uh, hopefully that uh, once you guys, uh, you know, get out of college, everything you do, that uh, your uh, road always brings you back to uh, back to Penn Hills. Always. Our seniors of the week, Dan Mason, Stephon Thompson, and Teddy Blakeman of the 2008 Penn Hills Indians. Coming up next, conference play continues. The 2-0 Indians put their unbeaten record on the line as they host the Kiski Area Cavaliers at homecoming here at Uhoss McGinley Stadium. And it's coming your way next here on Comcast. From Uhoss McGinley Stadium in Penn Hills tonight, week three of Quad East Conference play. The Penn Hills Indians play host to the Cavaliers from Kiski area. It's homecoming 2008, and your Penn Hills Indians put their undefeated conference record on the line. A very pleasant Friday evening to you. I'm Bill Navari. Great to have you along for another week of action here of Big Red football. The Indians 2-0 in the conference after uh, victories against Plum and last week a shellacking uh, at, uh, of Central Catholic at Carnegie Mellon University. The Kiski Cavaliers 0-2 in the conference, 0-6 on the season, while the Indians even their record last week at 3-3. The Kiski area Cavaliers won the toss. They will receive and get the ball first as we get on, we'll be getting underway here shortly. Indian captains on the field were Tommy Fulton, Chris Darby, Teddy Blakeman, Corey Kircher at all. The Indians in the gold helmets, red jerseys, gold pants. The Cavaliers, the gold helmets. The white jerseys and the white pants. The Indians will be moving left to right. And just shortly here, the Cavaliers should be taking to the field. Indian kicking team. Led by Mike Farracco. He's teening up his own 40, and the Cavaliers have yet to take the field. <coughs> Cavaliers will drop Jeff Jackson and Tariq Godson back. Godson will be on the near side, number eight. Jackson, number seven, on the far side. And we're underway. Fracco, line drive kick. Godson. We'll watch it go into the end zone, and that's an automatic touchback, even though he touched it in play. Once the ball goes into the end zone, it is a touchback, and the Cavaliers will start at their own 20-yard line. The Indian defense, big week last week at Kiski. Shut out the uh, Vikings until the final moments of the game. Led by the linebacker Dan Mason, the defensive captain. Missed a couple weeks. Uh, Due to an injury, got a little banged up. Coaches kept him out an extra weeks of precaution. And made a big impact last week. Expecting to do the same tonight. Brett Gunn from the shotgun hands it off. Tariq Godson will go to the right. There's Gunn with the carry, no gain. And it'll be second down and 10 for the uh, Cavaliers. Gun limping. Three gods in the quarterback again from the shotgun. Option this way. We'll pitch the gun. And he's wrapped up in the backfield and brought down for a big loss. Miles Davis will drop him close to the 10 yard line, give him a loss of nine. And it'll be third and 19. Nine. 
And Brandon Bailey made the tackle. I'll stick with Davis. He's on the near side of the field. Again, Godson from the shotgun. Quarterback draw. Big yardage. Godson will be stopped at the 25-yard line. Stephon Thompson with the tackle at the 20, excuse me, yes, the 27-yard line. And we'll check the flag. It's a holding call against Kiski. The Indians should decline it because it'll bring up a fourth down. 16-yard pickup for Tariq Godson. And should bring up a fourth down. I know what the discussion is. And it should decline it, bring up a fourth and five. And get the ball. Official off to the right there, making the... Uh, An official notification, and the Cavalier punt team will come on. Kiski kicks it away. Indians watch it bounce and go dead at the 35. Brandon Eiffel wisely let the ball go, and the Indians will have nice field position at the 35. So the Indian offense will take the field for the first time tonight after holding the Cavaliers to a net of five yards on their three plays. So the clock will stop with 10.01 to go here in the first quarter. Again, we're scoreless. Penn Hills and Kiske. Indians will send Eiffel to the near side. Dante Brown splits left, eye formation behind Tommy Fulton. Gabe Wright, the end of the near side, shifts, goes in motion to the left. Fulton will throw, looking over the middle, has Eiffel, and the pass broken up by Eiffel. Are they going to say it was an interception? They are. Pass picked off at the 34-yard line. Tariq Godson, the quarterback, with the interception, so the Indians go one play and out. It looked like Eiffel broke up the play, but give credit to Godson, who was able to hold on to the ball. Again, Godson in the shotgun, gun to his right. And it'll be gun on the delay, and the Indians are right there. Miles Davis will get credit with it for the tackle. Also in Terrell Washington. And he'll lose four back to the 30-yard line. So gun so far tonight, three carries minus 13 yards. Still early. Brett Gunn can run. Gun will now split off to the right side. Three receivers right. Two to the near side. Five receivers set. Godson looks right. Wide receiver screen to pass complete. Cavaliers big gain. It'll be a first down. Still on his feet across the midfield straight down to the 45-yard line. Jeff Jackson will have a first down for the Cavaliers. 25 yards and a Kiski first down. Same formation for the Cavaliers. Godson throws this way to pass. That's broken up by the Indians' Cullen Christen. And it'll bring up a second down and 10 for the Cavaliers.
Dodson fakes the draw, rolls to his right, he sees a sea of red, and the Indians will sack him. Finally bring him down, Nick Bobin at the 43-yard line. Loss of 12. And the Cavaliers with a third and 22. The Indians just kept coming. <clears throat> they were not fooled by the fake draw. And as Godson turned around to try to cut back, there was just six Indians closing in on him. Again, five receivers set for the Cavaliers. Trips to Godson's right. Low snap, does a nice job picking it up. Throws to the right. Pass is caught. And it'll be close to a Kiski first down. It looks like he'll be just short. Pass complete to Max Wilkin. On a third and 22, it looks like the Cavaliers pick up 21. So fourth and inches for the Cavaliers. So Wilkin did a nice job of hauling in the pass and picking up the 21 yards. Now the Cavaliers just short. They need to cross the 35-yard line. See the ball just on the right side of it. Godson keeps it himself, and the Indians push him across. It'll be a first dot for the Cavaliers. That's two yards for Dodson and a Cavalier first down. Clock will stop for a moment with 6.59 to go here in the opening period. Cavaliers again, throw to the right, set up the wide receiver screen. The Indians are there this time. Flag will come in. Brandon Bailey with the tackle. In fact, the play amounted to no gain. Officials are waving off the flag. So the play stands. Completed pass, but no gain. It'll be second down and 10 for the Cavaliers. Reek Godson from the shotgun. Looked like the receiver moved near side. Nothing called. Godson hit as he throws. The pass is up. And Stephon Thompson got a paw on it. And I'll bring up a third down and ten. Dan Mason was a coming. And Godson just got it away. As Mason barreled through him. Cavaliers have run 11 offensive plays to the Indians, one. Again, low snap, Godson rolling near side, running for his life. Gets across to 30, 25. That'll be just short of the 25. Brandon Eiffel coming up to make the tackle. They will mark him right at the 25 for a gain of nine. Colin Christian also in on the tackle. And it'll bring up another fourth and one for the Cavaliers. 
And the Cavaliers went three and out on their opening possession, and the Indians tried to go deep in their first play, and the Cavaliers picked it off. Nine plays later, that's where we are now. Another fourth and one for the Cavaliers. Godson faking this side, has the first down. Miles Davis finally brings him down from behind. At about the 21-yard line, but not until he gets a first down. He'll pick up four. And the Cavaliers move the sticks again. So first and ten, Kiske at the Indian 21-yard line. Godson looks to his right, throws downfield, has a man wide open in the end zone. Yes! Touchdown, Kiske! Jeff Jackson was wide open. Brandon Eiffel came in a little too late. And the Cavaliers score first. There were three men to the right and only two Indians covering. So nice read by Godson. The kick is blocked. And with 4.49 to go here in the opening period, the Kiski Cavaliers get their first lead of the season and lead the Penn Hills Indians by a score of 6 to nothing. Holy cow. 11 plays. 66 yards for the Cavaliers. The Cavaliers have given up twice as many points as they've scored, but they're averaging 17, over 17 points a game. Two key fourth downs that the Cavaliers converted. Also, a big play on a third and 22. The Cavaliers picked up 21 to set up a fourth and one. Now, you would think the Indians, even though there's 4.49 to go here in the opening period, the Indians need to uh, put something together here. Cavalier kicking team finally making it onto the field. Kicking off for Christie, number 16, Zach Sherrick. Receiving for Ben Hills, number 25, Kadeem Williams. Kadeem Williams and Chris Darby back for the Indians to turn the kickoff. And the Cavaliers try the onside kick, but they touch it before it goes to 10 yards. Zach Sherrick tried the uh, surprise onside. Touched it at the 45-yard line before it went to 10 yards, and that's where the Indians will get the ball. So the Cavaliers trying to catch the Indians napping, and I think they may have had the ball gone to 10 yards. But Sherrick just did not put enough foot into it. Well, the Indians offense quickly to the line of scrimmage. Blakeman, left side, has a lane. Across the 40, 35-30. First down, Blakeman. Inside the Kiski area, 30-yard line. They're going to mark him close to the 25. Mark him right at the 25. So that's 20 yards for Blakeman and the Indians' first first down. And the Indians again with the no huddle. 
Left side of the Indian offensive line just opened things up last week. Unbelievably, the Indians had great success going that way. Right behind, uh, it's time out on the field. Well, Kiski calls timeout. So we'll take a break. 4.41 to go, first quarter. Kiski six, Penn Hills nothing. You're watching Indians football. They're on Comcast. So the Indians go quickly back to the line. As I mentioned, the left side of the uh, Indians offensive line where the Indians go again. Blakeman again with a big hole inside the 10. Five, first and goal, Indians. At about the two-yard line, 23 yards for Blakeman. First and goal, Indians. Again, Corey Kircher and Brett Allen on the left side of the offensive line. Just opening things up wide. Again, they go that way, and Blakeman goes into the end zone for the Indians' touchdown. So it's all Blakeman, all 45 yards. And the Indians tie it at six. Fracco will come on to try to take the lead. Takes the Indians 24 seconds to tie the score. And now take the lead. They had three plays, 45 yards, all Teddy Blakeman. 4.25 to go first quarter. Penn Hill 7, Kiski 6. You're watching Indians football on Comcast. Fracco's kick at the five-yard line. Godson looking for somewhere to go. Comes right up the middle. A flag comes in. Godson with a nice return out about the 31-yard line. Terrell Washington finally on the tackle, but let's check the flag. Usually that goes against the kicking team. Flag is at the 35. Top block against the Cavaliers. So the Cavaliers will start at their own 16 yard line. And it looked like the block was away from the play. And Godson from the shotgun, gun to his left. Low snap. Godson keeps it himself, and the Indians are waiting. Maybe a yard. And it'll be second down and nine. Cavaliers brought Matt Robeson in motion. And an official timeout while. Well, Godson ties his shoelaces. So the Cavaliers dominating time of possession here early. I think the Indians have had the ball for about a minute so far in the first quarter, but they lead 7-6. Low snap, Godson rolls to his right, does a nice job picking it up, running for his life, finally brought, no, he's still on his feet. Now he's brought down, back at the 15-yard line. He'll lose two on the play. Miles Davis finally bringing him down. Gabe Wright, also in on the tackle.
Godson rolls to his left, has gun blocking, looking for someone to go, throws, has a man, Jeff Jackson. Gets out to about the 32-yard line. That's a first down for the Cavaliers. On a third and 11, Cavaliers pick up 17. Godson with an empty set. Again, the slap is low. Nice job of getting in. Here comes Mason. Runs right by him. Gets the pass up and over, and the pass incomplete. Stephon Thompson was on the coverage. The pass was intended for Josh Taylor. But Godson was looking to get rid of it as he had Dan Mason closing in on him. Clock will stop with 2.39 to go here in the opening quarter. 7-6 Penn Hills. Godson rolls to his right. And he's going to be hit and finally sacked. Mason hit him first. And then Aaron Donald will drop him at the 21-yard line. It'll be a loss of 12. So Mason hit him, stopped him, and then Donald brought him down. So another third and long for Kiske, but they've been having a knack of picking these up. Come the Indians on the blitz. Godson gets it away down the sideline, and a pass almost intercepted. Colin Christen on the coverage along with Eric Newsom. And the pass falls incomplete. Jeff Jackson, the intended receiver, and the Cavaliers will bring out the punting unit with 147 to go. Here in quarter number one. Kiske gets the kick away, high, short. Indians will watch it bounce across the 50, and the Cavaliers will down it at the 46-yard line. 147, excuse me, 136 to go. First period, Penn Hill 7, Kiske 6. You're watching Indians football on Comcast. Indians quickly to the line, and I mean quickly. Blakeman, again, left side across the 50, the 45. First down, Penn Hills at the 42-yard line. 12 yards for Teddy Blakeman. And another first down. The Indians weren't sure Blakeman was even going to play this week because he was been battling the flu. Blakeman again. Again left side. Blakeman does a nice job to stay on his feet and get to the 36 for a pickup of six. And I'll bring up a second down and four for Penn Hills. Darby, right side with a hole. Darby will have a first down and more. Darby down to the 27-yard line, picks up nine. And Darby just darting through that hole, showing his speed. Darby again, near side. Inside the 25 to the 23-yard line. Darby. 
Darby picks up four. He needs second down and six, and again, no huddle. Darby likes running this way. Now Darby, they said he likes to go right. They run him left. Darby will have a first down inside the 15. To the 13-yard line, 11 yards for Chris. So, hey, Darby seems to like to run behind Nick Bernhardy. Matt Campbell on the near side. I think the Indians are going to let the quarter expire. And that's what they're going to do. The Indians will let the clock wind down, and after one period of play, the score, Penn Hill 7, Kiski Area 6. You're watching Indians football here on Comcast. Blakeman to the nine, picks up four. And the Indians looking at a second down and six. Blakeman, right side. Cavaliers are there. And Blakeman will be dropped. Just over the 10, no gain. Indians throw into the end zone to pass incomplete. Brandon Eiffel, the intended receiver, and it'll be fourth down for the Indians. It'll bring out the field goal unit, it looks like. Brandon Eiffel gets up slowly. <coughs> it's like you hear it that right shoulder. Franco to try a 27 yard field goal. Tommy Fulton will hold. High snap. Fracco gets the kick down. The kick up. And it's over and through. With 10.49 to go, first half. The score now, Penn Hills 10, Kiski 6. You're watching Indians football on Comcast. Godson, look, swing pass near side to pass, bat in the air, and incomplete. That very dangerously could have turned into six points for the Indians. Gabe Wright got in and got the paw up on it. And the Cavaliers, C.J. Bryan. Almost uh, almost had a reception. And speaking of C.J. Bryan, I think C.J. Bryan had the right snap count. Everybody else missed it. Well, we got a moment, folks. DVDs of the Gall games are available from the Penn Hills football boosters at the booster booth Wednesday, Thursday nights, Friday home games, and Saturday JV games. Or you can call 412-337-5064. That's 412-337-5064. Cavaliers on a second down, 15. Gun on the delay. 
will lose a yard. And the Cavs looking at a third and 16. Miles Davis comes up to make the tackle, and the Cavaliers call timeout. Oh, excuse me, Gunn is hurt uh, on the play. You see him down there. Gunn was, came up limping earlier on his first carry, and now he's still on the field. It'll be a big loss for the Cavaliers' offense. 10 20 to go. First half. Penn Hills 10, Kiske 6. You're watching Indians football on Comcast. So Brett Gunn comes off the field, unofficially four carries, minus 18 yards. Big part of the Kiski offense. Hurt all season, missing the better part of the season, and he may not have been quite ready to come back. He was limping uh, right after the first carry. Cavaliers, Godson, loads the pressure, scrambles. Finally, Stephon Thompson will bring him down, along with the Indians' Brandon Bailey. Brings up a fourth down, but Godson gets out to the 40-yard line for a gain of 10. Darby drops back to his 30. Darby hit before he caught the ball. That'll be an interference call against Matt Robeson of the Cavaliers at the 27-yard line. Darby didn't call for a fair catch, but Robeson had to wait until he got the ball first. That'll move the Indians up a bit. I think the Indians have the option of making them re-kick, but I think they'll just take the ball. That's what they're going to do. The official comes... Near side, there he is right there. Oh, they're going to make him re-kick. Son of a gun. Hmm. We'll have to mark him back the uh, 10 yards. And give Darby a chance to uh, show his stuff. Cavaliers get the kick away. Darby watches it bounce and go dead at the 33. So the Indians wind up getting six yards out of the penalty. And the Indian offense will just take their fourth possession of the game. Scored on two of their first three. Darby behind Alec L. Darby bounces over the 34 to the 35. Picks up two. And again, the Indians without a huddle.
Bolton looking near side. Has a man. Dante Brown across the 40. First down, Indians at the Kiske 36 yard line. The mark him at the 35 for 30 yards. Brown doing a nice job to adjust on the pass and come back for it. <clears throat> and the Indians get their biggest play of the game. Blakeman coming near side, carries Cavaliers down to the 30, picks up five. And there's an injured Cavalier. Uh, they get him off the field. And the Indians actually go into a huddle. Blakeman goes right side across the 25. We'll have a first down at the 21. Another nine yards for Teddy Blakeman. Alec L doing a nice job of leading the way. Blakeman again behind Alec Ells blocks. Gets across the 15. Down close to the 10. They'll mark him at the 11 yard line. Well, they will mark him at the 10. That's 20 yards for Teddy Blakeman. First and goal, Indians. Blakeman right side. Down to the seven, picks up three. The second and goal, Indians from the seven yard line. Clock running under six and a half to go. Darby inside the five to the four yard line. Third and goal, Indians from the four. Clock rolling under six minutes to go. Time not a factor. And the Indians bring in the big guns. Aaron Donald. Joins the fray. It'll be the guard on the right side. Blakeman goes that way, follows the blockers as he get into the end zone. They're going to mark him at the goal line. Blakeman down close to the goal line. So it'll be fourth and goal from the one. Give Blakeman three yards. And the Indian offense stays on the field, and they come quickly again to the line. Blakeman right side, hit in the backfield, able to keep on his, stay on his feet, dives into the end zone from the one-yard line. And Blakeman gets his second touchdown of the game. Kiske almost broke it up. Blakeman got hit about the three-yard line and lost his balance. But was able to stay on his feet enough to dive in from the one. And the Indians extend their lead. Fracco comes on and with an exclamation point. Makes it an 11-point game. 
Nine plays, 67 yards for the Indians. And with 4.59 to go, first half to score Penn Hill 17, Kiski 6. You're watching Indians football on Comcast. Indian cheerleaders liking what they see out on the field. A five points so far tonight. Two extra points and a 27-yard field goal. And before this season's over, you'll see him with uh, opportunities of kicking him from over 40. Fracco squibs it. Picked up at the 19-yard line, throw back near side. Jeff Jackson with the ball looking for somewhere to go. And the Indians will force him out of bounds at the 24-yard line. In fact, they'll give him the 26. The Cavaliers trying to get something going. They, they led 6-0 in early. Since then, it's been all Indians. And a whole bunch of flags come in. And the Cavaliers have too many men on the field. Cavaliers with 11 men on the field. Godson rolls to his left, throws underneath, hits a man, and a pass complete for about two yards. Josh Taylor with the reception, Eric Newsom on the tackle. Watson looked like he was trying on a quarterback draw. And when he took off, he went right into a wall named Dan Mason. Back at the 19-yard line. And a loss of four. 17. Excuse me, third down, 17. Dawson oh, looks like he's trying to set up the screen. The Indians are right there. Indians slipping on this god-awful turf. And finally, the Indians bring him down at the 29-yard line. Brandon Eiffel with the tackle. Give him 11 yards, and it's fourth down. The Indians just not able to get their footing out there. Of course, the Cavaliers are playing on this grass, too. High snap. Kiske gets the kick away. Darby, fair catch called for at the 40-yard line. Let's it go by. And it'll roll dead at the 31. 2.24 to go in the half. The Indians lead by 11. You're watching Penn Hills football on Comcast. Homecoming crowd on hand tonight.
And the Indians, again, quickly to the line. High formation. Darby tossed this way, slips. Stay keeps his feet, gets across the 40 to the 42, gains 11 in a first down. Toss the other way. Darby looking for somewhere to go. Finds a crack and is able to slip ahead for four yards. Well, mark him at the 45. It's a three-yard pickup. Clock running, running, approaching a minute and a half to go. Fulton, near side, Brown at the 49. Across the 40, and out of bounds. At about the 37-yard line after a first down for the Indians. Give Brown 18 yards. Darby with a hole right side, slips. The dew must be settling on the grass. Picks up three. And it looks like the Indians call a timeout. The Indians, two timeouts left. 117 on the clock. And it looks like the dew is starting to settle out there. The kids are just slipping around. So the Indians, two timeouts left, 117 on the clock, and the ball to Cavalier, 35. So the Indians get their assignments from the sidelines. The big number 57, Nick Bernhardy, leading the charge out. And the Indians straight to the line. Twins right, Brown, the lone receiver near side. And the Indians have Darius Patton coming this way. Fulton throwing the right side. It looks like the pass was hit, and it's picked off by the Cavaliers. Up the left sideline, the Cavaliers, Scott Hawkins. Second turnover of the game for the Indians. And the Cavaliers have the football. 109 to go in the half. The Indians up by 11. You're watching Penn Hills football here on Comcast. Throwback. Cavaliers throw it again, and the pass is going to be incomplete. Flag on the far side of the field. Eiffel and Thompson on the coverage. So joined by Terrell Washington. A false start call against the Cavaliers, so the play goes for naught. So it'll be first and 15, Kiske.
Cavaliers connect on a quick slant inside the 20, 15. Josh Taylor to the 10 yard line. So Taylor gets hit on the quick slant. And a lot of yards after the catch and Let's see where they mark the ball. They're going to mark him close to the 10. Taylor's hurt. 34 seconds to go in the half. Indians up by 11. Kiske knocking on the door. You're watching Indians football on Comcast. Josh Taylor hobbles off following his 39-yard reception to the 10. It's first and goal. Kiske, 53 seconds remain. Stacy Graham in the backfield now for the Cavaliers. Joining Tariq Godson. Godson looking right. Lofty one towards the end zone. And that'll be a pass interference penalty. Brandon Bailey. That'll be half the distance to the goal, to the five. So it'll be first and goal, Kiske from the five yard line. And the Indians call timeout with 49 seconds to go, so we'll take another break. The Indians up by 11. You're watching Penn Hills football on Comcast. The Cavaliers on first and goal at the five. Empty set. Godson launches. Wide receiver screen. Touchdown, Kiske. Jeff Jackson in from five yards. His second touchdown of the game, and the Cavaliers now trail by five. I would think they're going to try to go for two to cut it to a field goal. Touchdown coming with 44 seconds to go. So the Cavaliers turn two Indian interceptions into touchdowns. Godson, Indians come on the blitz and he's sacked. And the Indians will cling to a five point lead here with 44 seconds to go. So the Cavaliers three plays, 44 yards. 10 yards of it was penalties, but the big play, the 39 yard pass to Josh Taylor to set them up with a first and goal at the 10 yard line. Well, the Indians have one timeout left. Let's see if they try to do anything or just try to run out to half. The Indians do get the ball to start half number two. The Indians had an opportunity just you know moments ago before the interception to try to extend their lead before the half. They go up maybe 24 to 6. But the tipped ball at the uh, line of scrimmage is picked off by the Cavaliers and returned back to the Indian 44 yard line. Pass was intercepted about the 20. Now the Cavaliers, after their uh, last touchdown, tried an onside kick. Yeah. 
Cavaliers, short kick, picked up by Thompson at the 30-yard line. Thompson straight up the middle, nice return in Kiski territory at the 45-yard line. So this changes uh, things just a bit. Marking with the 46, so the Indians in Kiski territory. Clock stops on a first down. So if the Indians try to move into Mike Fracco field goal range. Lakeman to Fulton's right. Fulton throws, right side, pass complete. First down for the Indians and out of bounds goes Chris Washington. Mark him at the 33 yard line. That's 13 yards. Near side, pass complete. Patton gets knocked down at the 29-yard line. There's an injured Cavalier on the field. Patton did a nice job to hold on to the ball after a pickup of about five. They didn't save their timeout as the Cavaliers need to get Jeremy Salm off the field. Clock will start as soon as he gets off. Fulton setting the play. Clock will stop in just a few moments. And there they go. Fulton looking to his right, throwing over the middle towards the end zone. Just too far for Washington. Excuse me, it was Berryman. Right now a 45-yard field goal. Let's see if the Indians try to maybe pick up a few yards, call the timeout, and get Fracco onto the field. Blakeman is to Fulton's left. Let's see if they give, him, give it to him on the delay. No, Fulton will indeed throw. Slips, throws, right side to pass too high. His time intended for Washington. The play took four seconds. Six seconds remain. And it looked like the Indians were trying to set up for getting Fracco a little bit closer. But now they will bring Fracco on to try a 45-yarder. Fracco sets it up at the 35, a 45-yard attempt. Fulton will hold. Oh, Michael, Michael, motorcycle. Fracco gets the kick away, and Joss misses near side, had the distance. It had the distance, but just wide to the near side. Cavaliers will take over with two seconds to go, and will take a knee. And the Cavaliers take the knee, and that's your half. After one half of play, the score, Penn Hill 17, Kiski 12. Second half action coming your way next. You're watching Indians football here on Comcast. Second half action about to get underway here at Juhas McGinley Stadium with the Indians leading the Cavaliers of Kiski by a score of 17 to 12. And we are underway. Kickoff picked up and dropped on at the nine yard line by Kadeem Williams. Back to Markham at the eight. That's this lovely sod here at Juhas McGinley Stadium. Some first half stats. Indians outgained the Cavaliers by a margin of 207 to 157. 143 to 26 in, in rushing yards. Cavaliers had the edge passing 131 to 64. Indians uh, two turnovers in the game, two interceptions. 
which the Cavaliers turned into touchdowns. And now the Indians uh, only up by five. Darby to the 16-yard line. Jimmy to the 12-yard line. Chris Darby will have to be the workhorse the rest of the night. Teddy Blakeman out for the remainder of the game. Blakeman getting hurt on the touchdown run. And they're expecting him to be back for the playoffs. Big loss for the Indians. Fulton, left side. Dante Brown, shake and bake across the 20, the 30, up the sideline. Dante Brown with the speed, 88 yards at a Penn Hills touchdown. Dante Brown just took the little flare pass and he took off. Looked like he may have been caught up to around the Indian 30-yard line, but he just burst and pulled away from the Cavaliers. And the Indians strike quickly. Fracco's kick up and through. And the Indians have now doubled up on the Cavaliers. 11-11 to go here. In the third quarter, the Indians now up 24 to 12. Teddy Blakeman in the first half, 13 carries, 99 yards. Darby, 8 for 44. Tommy Fulton, 4 of 9, 64 yards, 2 interceptions. And Blakeman had 2 touchdown runs. In the first half, wasn't even sure whether or not Teddy was going to be playing this week because of the flu, but he came in and nearly 100 yards in the first half. Indians second possession, they went 45 yards in three plays, all Teddy Blakeman runs of 20, 23, and two yards. And Blakeman also capping out a touchdown drive with a one-yard run on a fourth and goal. That was the play where he injured his knee. And an injury similar to what uh, Dan Mason suffered a few weeks ago. He missed a couple weeks. Also don't forget Mike Fracco, 27-yard field goal. So Blakeman's two touchdown runs. Dante Brown's catch and run. And Fracco's field goal. The Indians now 24 points. The Cavaliers half 12. Fracco. Squibbed. From the 15-yard line, Godson looking for somewhere to go. Gets by two Indians. Still on his feet, finally wrapped up. Larry Clark and Randy Miles. And Eric Vincent on the tackle for the Indians. And the Cavaliers will start at their own 29-yard line. Cavaliers lost uh, their big gun, literally, Brett Gunn. To an ankle injury. And he's missed most of the season with that injury. Tariq Godson, the quarterback, from the shotgun the entire game. Three receivers right. That's where Godson looks. Slips on his turf back at the 21. Aaron Donald will be credited with the sack. But Godson came back, tried to plant, and just slipped. Indians one of two teams in quad A with grass field. Kiske being the other one. Dodson sprints to his right, throws underneath the pass incomplete. Josh Taylor was there, but the pass too low. And it'll bring up a third down and 18 for the Cavaliers. Taylor had the 39-yard catch and run before the half, which set up the Cavaliers with a first and goal. 
They were able to cap it out with a short pass. To cut the lead to 17-12. But the Indians quickly on the second play of the half. Extend the lead back to 12 points. Dodson sprints to the right. Looks like he wants to run all the way, and he does. Dan Mason in pursuit will push him out of bounds at the 27-yard line. And it brings up a fourth down for the Indians. Excuse me, for the Cavaliers. Darby at his 44. Fair catch called for and made at the 43. 9.26 to go, third quarter. The Indians up 24 to 12 over Kiske. You're watching Pendles football on Comcast. No time and get up to the line of scrimmage. Darby. Models his way ahead for four. Darby, left side, gets into Cavalier territory at the 49. I'm going to mark him right at the 50-yard line for two. It'll be third down and four. The Cavaliers jump off sides. Should give the Indians a first down. That's what it is. It is an offside call. On a third and four, the five yards gives the Indians a first down via the penalty. Darby again with a hole right side. Could not get by Ben Yaconis. But he does get three yards. Darby gets a breather. We see Kadeem Williams in. Flag. It looks like this one will be called back. Just want to go against the Indians. So the Indians second down and 12. Williams gets to the outside. And the Cavaliers do a nice job of submarining him after a short gain.
Williams picks up one on his first carry of the season. Play action. Fulton throws. Pass incomplete. And brings up a fourth down. And the Indians will bring on the punt team. And will punt for the first time tonight, or so it would appear. back and now Darby comes in and joins the joins the party late. Yeah, looks like the Indians call timeout. 6.38 to go third quarter. Penn Hills 24, Kiske 12. You're watching Indians football on Comcast. Following the timeout, Fulton will drop back to punt from his own 40-yard line. High snap. Fulton gets the kick away. It's at the 20-yard line, and will be downed at the 16. So the Kiski offense, which went three and out on its first possession, will get... Another shot at it, trailing by 12. And the Indians' first punt of the game. Cavaliers have five. And a penalty flag, and they're going to bring this one back. So the Indians charged with an illegal formation penalty. And of course the Cavaliers will have him re-kick after being pinned inside their 20-yard line. Fulton's kick is blocked. And the Cavaliers will have it at the 40-yard line. Linnell Moore came in and blocked the kick. So the Cavaliers took the penalty and make them redo it. So the Cavaliers with a great opportunity. At the 40-yard line. Yeah. The penalty turned out to be a 44-yard gain for the Cavaliers. Godson looking for somewhere to go. Has nowhere to go but into the arms of Aaron Donald. It will drop him for a loss of two. Excuse me, it's Terrell Glanton. Second down, 12 for the Cavaliers. Clock approaching five and a half to go. Third quarter, the Indians up by 12. Pass too high and overthrown. Robeson was the intended receiver, but the pass incomplete.
Cindy! Third down and 12 for the Cavaliers. Screen pass this side and almost intercepted. Demetrius Moy ran right by it. Didn't expect the ball to be tipped like that. And it'll bring up a fourth down and 12 from the 42. And it appears Kiske will punt. Cavaliers will kick it. And hits a Cavalier at the 15, bounces back to the 20. And the Indians will have it there with 5.16 to go. The way the Indians have been getting quickly to the line, let's just keep it right here. Williams looking for somewhere to go. The Cavaliers close quickly. And Kadeem will get up to the 23-yard line. I'll mark him with a 22. Pickup of two yards for Williams. Wright comes in motion to the near side. Fulton will throw. Throws left to pass up for Dante Brown. And he'll be just short of the first down. It'll appear at the 29-yard line for pickup of seven. Brown trying to stretch that ball out. The official's not fold and mark him at the 29-and-a-half-yard line. Indians need to cross the 30. See how close they are to the 30-yard line. Darby. Will have the first down. He crosses the 30. Give him one. And that's a first down for the Indians. Darby just went into the pile. He needed about six inches. Got a foot, but it gives him a yard. And the Indians with a first down at the 30-yard line. Darby runs into Tom Fulton. But gets back to the line of scrimmage for no gain. And the Indians with a second down and 10. Darby in the first half had 44 yards on eight carries. Five and a half yards per rush. And Darby's been the workhorse here in half number two. After joining us late, Teddy Blakeman. Out of action for two to six weeks. Fulton throws this one long in the pass. Too far for Dante Brown. And to bring up third down and ten for the Indians. Clock will stop with 3.06 to go here in quarter number three. Eiffel and Washington this way. Patton and Brown, top of your screen. Fulton looking left. Flushed out of the pocket, throws, pass complete, Tyler Berryman. Berryman still on his feet across the 50 to the 49 of Kiske. 20 yards for Tyler Berryman. 
First down, Indians. Indians just blessed with a plethora of receivers. A flag at the 44-yard line. The Cavaliers with 12 men. Excuse me, they're giving a sideline warning. So there's no penalty, just a sideline warning. Patton comes in motion this way. Darby up the middle, big hole. Chris Darby, another first down for the Indians at the 39-yard line of Kiske. Darby well over 100 yards, I believe. And the Cavaliers jump. Darby off the gut, bowling his way across the 25 to the 24. Ten yards for Darby. And the Indians stay with the no huddle. A little brief one while they move the sticks. Darby. To the 16, eight yards. Darby now with 50 yards in the half. Flag back at the 24 yard line. And another at the 19. Dead ball, personal foul against the Indians. And one against the Cavaliers. So the offsetting penalties to play stands because they were dead ball fouls. Second down and two for the Indians. Darby inside the 10, excuse me, to the 10. Be a first out for the Indians. And five yards to the 11. So it's first to 10 Indians from the 11-yard line. Another flag, did the Indians jump or did the Cavaliers jump off sides? They say the Indians moved. So first and 10 from the 16 yard line.
Williams up to about the 12-yard line. We'll pick up four. And an injured Cavalier. Just keep dropping like flies tonight. Big injury for the Indians was Teddy Blakeman, who's out for the rest of the game. And we'll take a break. 44 seconds to go here, quarter number three. Score, Penn Hills 24, Kiski 12. You're watching Indians football on Comcast. <laughs> so the Indian offense comes back onto the field following the timeout for the injury. And third quarter winding down. Patton in motion this way. Fulton, play action, looks over the middle, has a man. In and out of the arms of Dante Brown in the end zone. The flag at the 16-yard line. Legal shift against it's a legal shift against the Indians. So do they take the play or do they take the penalty? I would think they would take the penalty. No, they declined it and took the play. Third down and 11 for the Indians. Again, play action. Fulton steps up into the pocket. We'll get to the 10 yard line for a carry of two. And brings up fourth down for the Indians from the 10 yard line. And will they bring Fracco back out? No, nope. we'll talk about it after the break. Third quarter expires. After three, your score, Penn Hills 24. Kiski area 12, you're watching Penn Hills Indians football. With the Wilson walking down the sideline on Comcast. And Fracco misses the 27-yard field goal. On the first play of quarter number four. And the Cavaliers will take over at their own 20, still leading by 12. Fracco, one of three attempts tonight, made a 27-yarder. Just missed this 27-yarder. That missed a 45-yarder just wide. Plenty of leg into it, but missed just wide. Quarterback draw. Godson up the middle with a big gain. Still on his feet across the 50. Brandon Eiffel finally collars him down in Penn Hill's territory at the 42-yard line. 38 yards for Godson in the first down. It looked like Aaron Donald was wrapped up and kind of pulled down from behind. Nothing called. And Godson on the straight quarterback draw picks up the 38 yards. Again, another quarterback draw. Indians are there this time. Mason, Glanton, Donald. And another injured 
Cavalier comes off the field. A flag back at the 49-yard line. That's going to be a false start against Kiske. So it's a five-yard penalty. Negates the play. The Cavs with a first and 15. The officials are resetting the game clock, the scoreboard clock, to 11.37. Kiske tries to set up a screen. They will go deep in the pass. Almost intercepted. Stephon Thompson steps up to break it up. That will bring up a second down and 15 for Kiske. Nice play, Stephon Thompson. It looked like Kiske was trying to set up the screen. But they threw deep. And Thompson playing center field came over and broke it up. Throwback screen. He's going to throw again. That's a fumble. Live ball. Will go out of bounds at the 31-yard line. Lost some more than. Loss of 20. It's going to go against... Godson on the carry since he threw the ball. Dodson slips in the backfield at the 26-yard line. We'll lose another six. And I'll bring up a fourth down and long. So fourth and 31 for the Cavaliers. Chris Washington calls for the fair catch. Muffs it and the Indians fall on it at the 47 yard line. Can't catch it clean, let it go by you. Washington trying to make something happen. Flag at the 37 yard line. Haven't seen him make a signal yet. He's going to be holding against the Indians. Holding on, 
So the penalty moved the Indians back to their own 37. 10-35 remains in the game. The Indians up 24-12. Darby for another five. Dante Brown in a quarterback for the Indians. Darby right side into the pile for another two. Indians will have a third and three. Darby has a hole, left side across the 50. Darby, submarined at the 47-yard line, goes down at the 46. That's a first down for the Indians. Indians needed three. He got 11. And the Indians move the sticks. Kadeem Williams to the 42. That's a tough four yards for Kadeem. And the Indians with a second down and six. That's a 12-point lead. The Indians coaching staff getting Dante Brown and some quarterback time. Williams again to the 39 for another three. And Indians with a third and three. Starting to get a little chilly here at Uhas McGinley. A nice night. Suddenly, I feel like the temperature just dropped. And the Indians take too much time, I think. Now there's two flags. And the Cavaliers have 12 men on the field. Look under seven and a half to go here, fourth quarter. Brown, quarterback sneak, rolls out right side. Inside the 20, 15, 10. Spins inside the 5 to the 4-yard line. Dante Brown, 30 yards on the quarterback sweep. And it's first and in goal, Indians. Everybody came left. Dante Brown faked to the right on the bootleg. And he just took off inside the five to the four-yard line. 30 yards for Dante Brown, who had an 88-yard reception on the second play of the half for an Indian touchdown. And he sets up the big red with a first and goal at the four. Actually, mark him to the three. It's a 31-yard gain.
We're almost at the two. Darby, touchdown, Penn Hills. Chris Darby, a tough three yards. And the Indians extend the lead. Touchdown coming with 7.07 to go. Franco to try the point after the kick is up. And he hooked it again. So with 7.07 to go, the score remains 30 to 12 Indians. And you see the Gator there in the back. There's Nick Sampson on it, but on the back of it there with the towel around the neck, that's Teddy Blakeman. Indians who had 99 yards unofficially in the first half. They're icing the knee. So hopefully the injury is not as bad as first believed, but originally thought to be an MCL out two to six weeks. Chris Darby, 113 yards, 22 carries. But, uh, certainly not putting uh, Teddy Blakeman back into this game at all. To risk further injury. So the Indians go 63 yards in seven plays. Five yards of that was uh, a Kiski penalty for too many men. But Darby again, 113 on 22. Fracco squibs again. Godson from the 20 yard line. And it'll be wrapped up and brought down at about the 30. Kadeem Williams comes in to make the tackle. Give him a 31 yard line. Kiske goes on the reverse. And the exclamation point on the tackle was Dan Mason who said, I have had enough of this. Jeff Jackson, a tough one yard. Now we'll give him two, call it second down and eight. They fake the option this way, pitch to Jeff Jackson going on the reverse. And Dan Mason caught up with him. That's one red jersey you don't want smacking you around. Godson, quarterback draw. Mason again will come up to make the tackle after a pickup of about three. So Aaron Donald. Another flag. Unsportsmanlike conduct call goes against Kiske. Somebody said something. This was a gain of one on the play. And they're going to march 10 yards off against the Cavaliers. So we'll be back to the 21-yard line. So it'll be third down and 20.
And Godson will be sacked. Howard Dorsey. We'll drop him back at the 14 yard line for a loss of seven. So the Indians getting a lot of the clean jerseys in. It's the punt return team. Washington calls for the fair catch and lets this one bounce away. And will die at the 42-yard line. And another flag. At the 47. It's going to be a personal foul call against the Cavaliers. They're going to mark this off from the line of scrimmage at the 42. Indians should have it at the Cavalier 43. Darby spinning to the 41 for two. Indians will be in action Friday night to take on the Fighting Foxes of Fox Chapel at Fox Chapel High School. Foxes in action tonight against Woodland Hills. Darby for one. Patton in motion to the right. Darby again. Darby with a big hole and a first down. Chris Darby in the center field. Touchdown, Penn Hills. Chris Darby up the gut, 41 yards. His second touchdown of the game. Darby, 44 yards rushing on three carries in this drive. Gives him 157 yards on 25 carries. Franco gets this one up and through. And with 3.20 to go in the game, your score, Penn Hills 37, Kiske 12. You're watching Indians football on Comcast. Fracco, who's had a busy night. Kicks this one to the 14. And Stefan Thompson will end it at the 27. Jeff Jackson with a nice return. About 20 yards. And the Joe fetches the tee. And 
the Penhills band into it tonight. And so are our award-winning Penhills Indian cheerleaders. Godson steps up. Indians on the blitz. Looking for somewhere to go. Up the sideline, runs out of bounds. Forced out by Aaron Donald and Nick Boobin. So they mark him. No, they're going to mark. It's going to be short of a first down, it appears. No, it is a first down. Give 10 yards to Tariq Godson. Clock stopped for the moment with 3.02 to go. Godson looking left. Sides to take it himself. And it'll be dropped after a short gain. A penalty flag on the far side of the field. Right now it stands as a three yard run. Dan Mason with the tackle for the Indians. And the officials wave it off. See if the Indians came across or they were drawn off. Uh, they're going to say the Cavaliers moved. So it'll be second and 11. Godson looking this way, under pressure. Ducks it up and runs. Still on his feet, across the 50. Stumbles his way ahead and finally wrapped up and brought down by Stephon Thompson at the 47-yard line. 16 yards and a first down for Tariq Godson. Clock now under two minutes in running. Godson rolls to his left, looking for somewhere to go. Hit as he throws, and a pass caught inside the 30. Down close to the 20-yard line. It's Josh Taylor. They'll mark him at the 26-yard line. Pickup of 25. Godson rolls this way, steps out of the rush of Stephon Thompson and then goes down, so he'll be sacked. At the 27 yard line, loss of five. Clock 
Clock rolling at 10 seconds. The final play of the game, another throwback. And that's officially a run. And a drop back at the 38 yard line, a loss of 11. And that'll do it for the game. Your final score, Penn Hills 37, Kiski area 12. The Indians extend their winning streak to three games. They're now 3-0 in the conference. And the Cavaliers drop to 0-3. The Indians now have a winning record on the season. They move to 4-3. The Cavaliers held an early 6-0 lead in this contest. Following interception on the Indians' first play of the game. Cavaliers drove down a 21-yard pass. Cavaliers up 6-0. Indians came right back. Teddy Blakeman, 45 yards on three carries. Gave the Indians a 7-6 lead. Mike Fracco, 27-yard field goal was 10-6 Indians. Then Blakeman's second touchdown run of the game. Again, uh, the play that he hurt his knee. Indians up 17-6. And then a late interception. And an nifty return by the Cavaliers. Gave them great field position. They were able to capitalize. Get into the end zone before the half. It was 17 to 12 Indians at halftime. Indians on their second play of the half. An 88 yard pass to Dante Brown. Indians up 24 to 12. Chris Darby adds a couple of touchdown runs. And your final score, 37 to 12. Chris Darby, 25 carries, 156 yards, two touchdowns. Teddy Blakeman, 13 carries, 99 yards, two touchdowns. Dante Brown receiving at four receptions for 142, including the 88-yarder and a touchdown. So we're checking over our stats here. Dante Brown, one carry for 31 yards. That set up a one Chris Darby's touchdown runs. Game totals on the night. The Indians 22 first downs to the Kiski area's 11. Indians 303 yards rushing, 179 yards passing. He outgained Kiski tonight, 482 to 211. 300 yards rushing tonight for the Indians. Phenomenal night. The Indians who trailed early in possession time finished out the game 23-24 to 21-11. The Indians sacked Kiski area six times for a net loss of 29 yards. So the Indians a nice night defensively, offensively, the 304 yards. Two turnovers, which the Cavaliers turned into 12 points, but the Indians come away with the victory. Big news tonight, Teddy Blakeman, the injured knee. We'll check the status on his injury, but he missed the entire second half icing down the knee. Uh, first report, an MCL injury. Let's check and see. That's how major it is. Last report we heard that uh, similar to what's Dan Mason had earlier this season when he missed two weeks. So depending on the severity of Teddy Blakeman's injury, he may miss the final two games of the season and hopefully be back for round one of the WPIAL playoffs. Again, the Indians in action Friday night at Fox Chapel to take on the Fighting Foxes. Again, your final score here at Penn Hills. The Indians 37, the Kiski Area Cavaliers 12. I'm Bill Navari. Thank you for watching Penn Hills Indians football here on Comcast.